Well, welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Sarah Grand, author of the new book, The Book of the Most Precious Substance. Grand's work has been published in over a dozen countries. Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Sure. Well, if someone hasn't yet heard about your new novel, The Book of the Most Precious Substance, how would you describe the novel? Um, it is a sort of a, a crime mystery supernatural novel about a book dealer who goes looking for a rare book that is about sex magic and occult powers and how her life changes as a result of this search. And do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to write the book of the most precious substance? I do not. It's funny. I was trying to remember this the other day, and I could not remember what set the whole thing off. Like, what was the original impulse? I could not remember, which is unusual for me. Usually, I sort of remember writing that first bit or that first line, and I can't remember with this one. And, and what what was it that kind of appealed to you about kind of the the theme of this rare book dealer and sex magic? Um, well, there were a couple Hello? things. One is I worked in the book business for years and years and years. I was a bookseller for years. I sold rare books. Now I'm obviously starting a publishing house. I'm publishing this book myself. So books have always been this huge part of my life. And I just realized almost everything I've written has some sort of magical book in it that's like the prize that has to be found or that has to be understood um i had to uh do something that i wouldn't wish on any writer which is read one of my old books again um i will pray that no one else has to go through this it's always a little challenging i had to read my old book come closer because i'm annotating it to do a little fun thing for good reads um and there's so many books in that too there's books in every single book that I've written so I'm not quite sure where that obsession comes from but that is a big part of everything I write and I think I just have to accept it <laughs> <laughs> Well as you mentioned uh, a moment ago you founded your own indie press Dreamland Books that is publishing the book of the most precious substance what led you to start Dreamland Books It was something that I've always <laughs> wanted to do I published my very first book, which was 20 years ago now. Um, I was wondering if I would be better off sort of doing it myself. And I wasn't for those first few books. I published my first few books with Soho Press, and I'm really glad I published with them and stuck with them. And they've been wonderful about keeping those first two books in print and available to readers. I haven't had that same luck with all of my books. I've had really positive publishing experiences and really negative publishing experiences. Um, and the tales just kind of skipped. I mean, the scales kind of tipped, sorry, <laughs> from this being something I was always dreaming about doing to something that it actually made practical sense to do. Um, writers are expected to do more and more when they work with big uh, corporate publishers. And it sort of reached the point where if you're doing so much yourself and you have always wanted to publish and this has always sort of been the dream, I could be doing all this work for my own press just as easily. <clears throat> We're both coughing. It's that time of year. So uh, I know. Um, so I was curious, um, are you, do you have plans to, to publish other authors under Dreamland Books? I hope to. I'm going to go through the whole publication with this process first. It comes out in February. See what I fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> if I fuck up a huge amount, I'll do another one of my own books first to iron out those kinks. And if I feel like I'm ready to take on other writers, I'll start doing that. But eventually, yes, definitely. The goal is to publish a couple of books a year by myself and by other gotcha. people. So what was your original writing journey that led you to writing and getting your first novel published? Um, it was something I had always wanted to do. My mother was a really gifted writer who never really did anything to it with it. She was not really a career oriented person, but she was a really, really gifted writer. I was very fortunate to grow up in a house just full of books. Both my parents were huge readers. Um, so it was always sort of a part of the landscape in a way that, you know, not everyone is that fortunate to sort of grow up with books and writing just being part of everyday life. I was very lucky in that regard. So it was always sort of on the table as as something I wanted to do. And then I got out of college and I did normal, real jobs for a while and fucking hated every minute of it um, and said, well, I got to try this. This is the my sort of one chance at life to happiness. This is my one chance of having the life that I want. And I'm incredibly fortunate that it worked out. So are you working on a new novel now? I am. I'm working on the next Claire DeWitt book. 
which is the detective series that I write. I am working on another novel that I'm not sure we'll ever see the light of day. I always go through a phase with novels where I'm not quite sure if I'll finish them or not. Um, and I, I never feel bad if I don't finish them. Experiments are, are good for your health, I think. <laughs> good for your mental health to kind of try these books and see if they work or don't work and good for your creative process. So I'm working on a couple things. And I wrote a novella this summer that I'm sort of exploring what would be the best way to publish it. Um, and that was another reason to start my own press is so I could publish Things that I write that don't fit neatly into a sort of corporate publishing category, like novellas, <laughs> short stories. What do we do with those in this day and age when we can do fun, interesting things with them, whether that's a fine press letter print edition or just toss it up on Amazon or or some combination thereof? True. Well, um, I'm curious, is your writing process the same across um all the novels that you write or even like the novella, for example? Do Do you do um much outlining or do you just dive into the narrative and see where it takes you what what's that process like for you and does it change from from project to project i think it's a little bit different from project to project um and there's one big exception which i'll get to in the end but on the whole there's consistencies and for me it's dive in follow that creative impulse where it goes then stop and look at what you have and if you need to outline a little whether that's in your head or on paper outline a little dive in, let the creative process take you wherever it goes, and then go back to an outline or a structure. So it's this back and forth between letting the, you know, batshit crazy part of myself, the creative part of myself kind of go nuts and see where that leads. And then the part that's like, hey, I want this to be a finished something at the end. Product is the wrong word. A finished work at the end. How do I actually get from A to B to C? And I think that's definitely a challenge for a lot of it was a challenge for me when I first started, and I think that process is a challenge for a lot of writers who are, you know, kind of just starting out or just getting their experience is how do you sort of balance those two needs. The exception is the Claire DeWitt books, because I have been writing this detective series for a long time now, and there is this whole universe of facts and history uh, for the characters that need to be taken into account with the work. So it does require a bit more planning, outlining, attention to detail, there's a bit less room to go crazy at this point in those books. Sure. And do you, since that is a series, have you, have you plotted out additional books or, or not plotted, but have a story arc of, of Claire or does it just come to you each book at a time? Um, somewhere in between. I always knew the series would lead to sort of answering the central questions that were raised in the beginning, which won't be the end of the series, but it will be the end of this cycle of the series. Um, but I didn't know exactly how I was going to answer them until recently. So this next book will be sort of the end of this, the bigger mysteries that again were raised in the first book. And then from there on, the books can be whatever I want them to be. That's great. Well, what writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories or novels? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say just start. One thing I think that trips up beginning writers is a silly little mechanical thing. You don't have to start at the beginning. And what you start with doesn't have to end up at the finished book. You know, you asked early about that original impulse for the book. Often those original impulses leave the finished version. They're not needed anymore. Often that thing that was the first way in actually ends up not being useful because you've transformed it so much over a year or two of work. Um, so you don't have to start at the beginning. You don't have to start with any sort of linearity. Is that a word? Any sort of <laughs> any sort of straight line, any sort of straight path ahead. Uh, there's an old expression. I don't remember who said it. Maybe Yale Doctora, which all you need is the headlights as if you're driving a car at night your headlights just illuminate a couple feet ahead of you but that's enough to get started sure um so i would say to a new writer just dive in anywhere whatever that weird little thing is that's in your head just go for it start writing that thing and see if that opens some other doors of what you want to write well what novels or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed um, I read two books by friends this week that are amazing. My friend Connor Habib wrote a book called Hawk Mountain that's out next year sometime. I don't have the exact update. And I am about halfway through with my friend Alex Segura's book called Secret Identity, which is out in March of 2022, both of which I would highly recommend. Very different books, both very uh, beautiful books. That's great. 
Well, where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your novels and your new novel, The Book of the Most Precious Substance? Um, let me look up what my website is because I always forget what it okay. is. It is not sarahgrand.com. I lost sarahgrand.com ah. and now it is a site that advertises uh, electric razors. Not sex magic. <laughs> Which might be more useful to you. <laughs> yeah, and maybe that's better. Maybe if you go to sarahgrand.com, you will actually get more useful information than you will at my website. <laughs> I think my website is worldgreatestdetective.com. That's great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Sarah Grand, author of the new book, The Book of the Most Precious Substance. The novel is available now, so go buy a copy. And Sarah, thanks for doing this interview. Thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate it.